Welcome, and thank you for participating in our first community forum. My name is Dwayne Cave, and I serve as first vice president of the Moulton Miguel Water District Board of Directors. Having previously chaired our Citizens Advisory and Community Relations Committee, it is my pleasure to welcome you to Moulton Miguel Water District's first community forum. With so much going on in the world, I just want to start by thanking you for taking the time to join us today as we discuss our local water system and current water issues. Your participation is important to developing effective water policy. Everyone needs water and expects it to be there when we turn on the tap, but few people take the time, as you have, to participate, to engage, and to help our community properly prepare for our ongoing water needs. So thank you. Your participation is important to our ability to plan for the future and develop effective local water policy. Moulton McGill understands the importance of customer engagement. Our board has long recognized that the best way to lead the district is by listening to our customers. For years, we've hosted a traditional Citizens Advisory Committee as the primary vehicle for getting that public engagement. And that system has worked well for a very long time. But times have changed and seem to be changing faster every day. Earlier this year, our board decided it was time to rethink our approach. And with COVID-19, there are now obvious limitations to our ability to meet in person. We wanted to develop an approach that could withstand the almost weekly fluctuations in state closures, public health orders, and changing circumstances. This format is a better way to accommodate those restrictions, no matter how long we remain in these uncertain conditions. This shift in our outreach is also bigger than the coronavirus. We have so many technologies at our fingertips and the ability to record videos, live stream, and connect through social media. The goal of our community forum is to modernize how we conduct public outreach and expand the number of people learning about and engaging in water policy. It's no secret that California has a perennial water supply problem and it takes ongoing planning to make sure that our community has the water we need to thrive. One way to strengthen our water policy is to get more young people involved in the discussion. And so with this new community forum, we hope to reach more young people with a more diverse cross-section of our customers. In my 43 plus years of experience in public utilities, I've learned that our customers oftentimes has the best insights. Whether it's finding new ways to improve service or identifying ways to communicate, our customers are our greatest resource. So if you have an idea or are facing a problem, please reach out to me, our staff, or any member of the board. We all take great pride in serving you. For our forum today, we decided it was best to start at the beginning, to give you an inside look at how we get water to our customers and how we've been providing customer service and handling our operations amid this ongoing global pandemic. You'll hear from June Lopez, our general manager, about where our water comes from and the impacts of COVID-19 on service. Matt Collins, our assistant general manager, will share information about how we're protecting our workforce. Todd Novacek, Moulton Miguel's operations manager, will get into the nitty gritty about how we've modified some of our work crews and practices to continue getting you safe drinking water to your homes during this pandemic. And finally, Lindsay Stuvik, our water efficiency manager, will offer some helpful tips for conserving water and lowering your monthly bill. But before we hear from them, I'd like to turn things over to our board president, Brian Probolsky. Brian, take it away. Thank you, Dwayne. To echo Vice President Cave's statement, I too would like to thank you for joining us at this inaugural community forum of Moulton Miguel Water District. Before I begin, I'd like to take a moment to recognize Duane for his work and leadership in our community outreach efforts. Duane is an extraordinary public servant 
who spent four decades working in public utilities. We're incredibly lucky to have Duane's expertise on our board. I'm Brian Probalski, and I'm honored to serve as president of Molten Eagle Water District. Together, our staff and board of directors serve more than 172,000 customers in South Orange County. We take great pride in delivering safe, clean, and reliable drinking water at the lowest rates in South Orange County. Today, we want to focus our first community forum on a subject that's on everyone's mind, COVID-19. We want our customers and community partners to understand that we've been working hard to serve customers throughout this global pandemic, and that preparation began well before most of us ever heard of Wuhan, COVID-19, or social distancing. Walt Miguel maintains an emergency response plan, routinely practices emergency protocols, and trains all staff on our continued service during an emergency. Over the last decade, our board has invested more than $75 million to increase our water storage capacity more than ninefold. In the unlikely event of a major outage, we have a local emergency supply to serve every customer for more than three weeks. As a father of three children and a Molten Nigel customer, I believe that our agency's top priorities must always be safety and reliability of our water supply. Our water is safe, clean, and continues to surpass every state and federal water quality standard. That includes protection against coronavirus. The Centers of Disease Control and Prevention reports that coronavirus has not been detected in any drinking water systems. Every year, Molten Miguel conducts approximately 12,000 water quality tests that are independently analyzed at state-of-the-art laboratories, and we make these water quality findings available to the public as part of our commitment to the transparency and accountability. There's no question that COVID-19 has been a challenge, but we've met and continue to meet the challenge, and we're here for our customers. Molten Nigel has remained fully operational throughout the entire crisis. We're very proud and grateful to our dedicated staff for ensuring that all of our customers have full access to our water and wastewater services. We also recognize that our work isn't over. We're fully committed to delivering for our customers throughout the entirety of this crisis, no matter how long that may be. That will require us to think creatively, consider how we serve our customers. Already, we've seen a tremendous growth in our online presence, shifting workshops and some of our in-person services to an online format. We'll continue to identify ways to serve and improve our service, save money and conserve water. Thank you for joining us and please let us know how we can serve you. And I wanna encourage every customer to let us know how we can do better. If you have an idea or see a problem, please give me a call. I love talking to our customers and appreciate hearing from the people we serve. Now, Duane, back to you. Thanks, Brian. It's great serving with you on the board for the Molten Miguel Water District. And now let's move on. It's time for June Lopez, our general manager, who's gonna tell you a little bit about our operations and how we're dealing with COVID-19. Thank you, Vice President Cave. Hello everyone, my name is June Lopez and I'm the General Manager of Molten Niguel Water District. Thank you for joining us at our very first community forum. I hope you and your loved ones are staying healthy and safe. Today I want to share with you a little bit about your water. First of all, your water quality, the reliability of our operation, and what we're doing to continue to ensure the highest level of customer service that you have come to know and trust. First of all, we serve six cities in South Orange County, and all the water comes from outside of our service area. We call that imported water. We get all of our water from the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California. They serve about 20 million Californians. And the water comes from Northern California, the Delta, through the State Water Project, and from the Colorado River through the Colorado Aqueduct. Year after year, there are rigorous monitoring efforts underway at Metropolitan and right here at Molten Miguel to make sure that the water delivered to your home and business are very safe. As a matter of fact, we conduct annual water quality testing report, which can be found on our website, and we always exceed or meets all state and federal drinking water requirements. 
And I know this is very important to all of you. And you can rest assured that the water coming out of your tap is always safe. Operationally, we know that many of you are spending more time at home than before. So we know that you come to rely on continuous service of water. And that's why we're working very hard using technology to stay connected. Even though some of our employees are working remotely, when you call us, when you need us, we are there to answer your questions and provide all the support that you need. I'm sure you see our field personnel out there in their trucks and equipment, working hard through all different conditions to make sure that all of our infrastructure is maintained to ensure reliable service. We looked at our maintenance schedule to make sure that as you are spending more time at home, that we don't have interruptions in the delivery of the service. So we've modified our schedule to make sure that you have the water at your home and your business when you need them. Going forward, we want to hear from you. Your input is so important. We recently did a customer service survey and found that over 95% of you saw no lapse or interruption in the customer service. And we're very happy and proud about that. But more input and feedback is what's going to allow us to better serve you. And in these times, we're using virtual technology and online platform to give you the tools and the information you need to work around your home and make it as efficient and as beautiful as possible. Our virtual landscape is very popular. We're also hosting community forums for all of our HOA residents to be there for you during these times. Even though we are separated, we are still connected. Because through all these conditions, whether it be the pandemic, the fire, the rolling blackout, whatever may come our way, our focus remains on you, our commitment to our customers and to our community. And we are there for you to ensure that you and your family have what you need. We are essential service and we take that duty very seriously. We are very proud to serve you for 60 years and we look forward to serving you for many more years ahead, working with you through trust and building the relationship. We are here for you. Thank you so much for joining us. Next up for our forum, we're going to go to Matt Collins, our Assistant General Manager. Matt is going to talk about protecting our workforce during COVID-19. Matt. Thank you, Vice President Cave. Uh, welcome to the Bridalwood Flow Control Facility. As June had spoken about earlier, the water that we bring in to provide service to you on a daily basis comes from outside of the county. This facility here moves a lot of that water into our communities and then distributes it throughout all of the different cities that we serve. So it's a critical facility for the critical services that we provide. As a critical service provider, it's really important for the district to plan for emergencies. We work day in and day out to plan on critical responses to different types of emergencies. COVID-19 was a different one for us. We weren't quite prepared for how to address the COVID-19 pandemic to make sure that we can continue to provide critical services, but also protect our employees and our staff on a day-to-day -day basis. So we had to adjust. Uh, fortunately, we have an amazing team full of very talented and innovative individuals who are able to adapt and able to adjust to changing conditions while understanding how critical it is that we keep providing the services that we provide to you on a day-to-day -day basis. In order to do that, we had to start looking at how can we protect our staff from potential exposures to the COVID-19 pandemic. And some of that was identifying staff that we were able to ask to work from their remote locations, whether it be home, a home office, or other opportunity that they have. How can we move staff from working in the day-to-day -day offices in the field back to their homes? Obviously, we have a number of field staff who are critical daily to the services that we provide, and you'll hear more about that a little bit later. But on a day-to-day -day basis, what are we doing to ensure that our staff can work remotely and still meet the needs of our customers? So we worked really closely with our IT department, all of the different departments that we were asking to work remotely, customer accounts, accounting, uh, engineering, and what services did they need, what tools, what equipment it was going to be necessary for them to provide the services that they need to you on a day-to-day -day basis. We had been set up quite substantially ahead of time. That's a lot of the forward thinking that the district has to figure out how to continue to be adaptable. 
You know, myself, for example, I have to be able to respond to emergencies on a reg regular basis, any time of the day, we're a 24-7 operation. So I was already set up to be able to work remotely. How do we expand that to more staff? Well, we made sure we had a sufficient equipment. We made sure we had sufficient connectivity so that staff can get access to the information and the equipment that they need. We made sure that our customers, when they were calling in, had ability to access the staff that they need to talk to to work through issues, whether it be through bills, through different requests, through improvements that they were looking to make to their homes or their businesses. All of those services are necessary and thanks to the hard work of all our staff, hopefully you as a customer never saw an impact to that transition as they move to the remote work. We pride ourselves as an organization on being one who loves to collaborate, communicate, and work together. Well, now that so much of our staff had been able to work at a remote location, how do we continue that process? Well, again, we went to the technologies that were available to us and we implemented things like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, so that daily we're checking in with each other, asking about progress, making sure the services are being met. These are some of the things that we did as an organization to help to make sure that you as a customer got the water you needed, the wastewater collection services that you were looking for, and any other services that we could maybe provide. You'll hear more about some of those other services and how we were able to transition those to remote services as well. All of this in the name of being innovative while protecting our employees at the same time from this COVID-19 pandemic. It's been a learning experience for all of us. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about what we did today. Back to you, Director Cave. And now we're gonna hear from Lindsay Stuvik, our water efficiency manager, who's gonna talk about our award-winning programs and how we've had to adjust those due to COVID-19. Lindsay. Thanks, Director Kay. We've actually done quite a bit to ensure that customers still have the support that they need during COVID to stay water efficient and keep their bills low. So one of the things that we've done is we're starting to install smart meters at residential properties. That means that customers have access to hourly water usage data. Once we have your smart meter installed, you'll get this put on your door and you can actually turn it over and see that the easiest way to access that information is at mywatermnwd.com. That gives you access to a free portal where you can go and get your usage, sign up for leak alerts. So if we detect any consistent usage on your meter, we'll send you an email so you know right away to go look for a potential leak at your home. Another thing we've done is we've taken a very popular program, our home saving surveys, and gone virtual with them where you can actually work with a water efficiency rep over a phone via FaceTime or Zoom, and we'll help you troubleshoot issues in your landscape. And we can also help troubleshoot the issues indoors. So did you know that a toilet actually can waste 500 gallons a day? We can help you diagnose that problem and help avoid a high bill. Another thing we've done is we've taken our sustainable landscape workshop series virtual. We'll be offering these classes twice a month and you can sign up, they're completely free. You can learn all about sustainable landscaping and how to create a watershed-wise, beautiful garden in your, at your very own home. And the last thing I want to talk about is H2O for HOAs. This is our fourth annual event, but it's our first time going virtual. It will be held Thursday, October 29th from 8.30 to 10.30. We're inviting HOA board members, property managers, professional landscapers, and even residents to join us to learn how you can make your community more water efficient. So thanks, Director Cave. Back to you. Now we have Todd Novacek, our operations manager. Todd's going to talk about the nitty gritty of our crews working on the field during these challenging times. Todd. Thank you, Director Cave. Moulton Gill Water District staff responds to a variety of emergencies almost on a daily basis. Uh, we've got electricians, we've got maintenance personnel that are responsible for keeping stations like this responsible, which uh, allow us to flow water to the entire water districts and out to your homes. Uh, we've got our street crew personnel, which you'll see out there when we have line breaks, uh, setting up traffic control and digging into your street and fixing those line breaks, pulling new water services. And then we've got our customer service uh, department, which responds to all customer requests for anything from low pressure to uh, water quality issues to uh, um, any requests that we might have from customers. So we respond to a lot of, a lot of emergencies and uh, situations, but uh, COVID took us all by surprise, I think. And uh, uh, after early reporting, um, staff uh, immediately started gathering together. We started planning for this and really planning for the worst, which is, uh, I'm glad we did because um, 
six months into this, it, it did turn out to be worse than anything I think the rest of us maybe thought it would be. So we've, uh, we uh, ordered parts ahead. We uh, ordered uh, supplies, computers, um, anything we thought we might need to uh, uh, continue in, into this response plan long term. Um, our primary goal was to uh, find ways to keep our staff safe and still provide water service uh, to our customer base uh, and in a safe and reliable manner. One of the ways that we did that was we Im it immediately became obvious to us that we needed to divide our staff in half. And we did that and put them on different schedules. And uh, that took a lot of planning and a lot of change among the field staff. We're all, we're all used to working together. And uh, um, we made that happen. And, and we made it happen in a, in a great fashion. Um, as you drive around the district, in addition to our normal white trucks and our uh, Molten Miguel logo on the side of the trucks, you'll see that we're color coded now. Some of the trucks will have red, the rest of the trucks will have teal. Uh, as staff come out to help you on the street or if they're working on the street or they respond to your, your service requests at home, they'll have teal gaiters on, teal hats, red hats, uh, red br uh, bracelets, anything for us to define if you're for each other that you're on a red team and we're on a teal team and then uh, when we're out in the field we don't interact we we divide our services it takes a lot more communication it takes a lot more planning we have daily meetings but so far we've been able to divide our crews in half keep them safe and uh, uh, respond to your needs as customers um, we all look forward to getting back to normal and and uh, responding to uh, customer needs on a normal basis, and, uh, but uh, for now uh, we're prepared for this COVID response and uh, we're uh, uh, executing our response plan in a, in a great manner. So uh, we look forward to getting back to normal and um, I'll see you guys out in the field. We asked for your questions today and we received a couple pretty good ones. The first one is from Sherry Weininger and she was asking about the hardships that our customers are having due to COVID-19. She was asking about bill reviews and possible bill adjustments. With this one, let's turn it over to Lindsay. Lindsay? That's a great question. Yes, we're still offering bill adjustments during COVID. The easiest thing to do is just to go to our website and apply directly. Just make sure that you get your bill first and you have usage in tiers four or five, because that will make you eligible for the bill adjustment process. And if you have any questions, we're always here to help. Just give us a call and we can help answer any questions about leaks or repairs, anything related to your bill adjustment process. And while you're on our website, check out some of our workshops and some of our rebates. We're continuing to offer those both for residential and business customers to help you save water and money. Thank you very much, Lindsay. We have another question here, it's from Aditi. He was asking, what has been the most challenging situation that we've seen in the field? So with that one, let's turn it over to Todd Novacek. The biggest challenge that I think we faced out in the field is having to divide our crews in half. Uh, and the reason we did that is to protect our crews from uh, being exposed to COVID and still be able to uh, um, provide water service out to our customers in, in the field. Uh, Molten Miguel Water District had a great golf swing before COVID. We're very good at what we do. And by uh, splitting in half, it took a lot of people out of their comfort zones. And I think in the end, uh, that's gonna make us a stronger district in the sense that I have supervisors uh, supervising not only their crews on certain days, but uh, the crews of supervisors that are on their off days. And I think that's probably been the most challenging aspect of all this and, uh, and communication. Um, we meet almost literally almost daily uh, and uh, update our response plan but in order to keep people safe out in the field this is a dangerous job we need to be able to communicate and people need to be able to uh, know what's going on in the field and mostly what's expected of them and uh, and in what way they should be uh, responding to events in the field so communication and uh, and keeping staff safe are the, the two biggest uh, challenges we face right now uh, by having to divide our crews in half, but we're doing an excellent job at it. And uh, I know we're gonna come out of this stronger at the end. Thanks, Todd, great answer. Our next question comes from Brian Kim. Brian is a student at Lisa Niguel High School, and he's with the World Class Eco Frico Club. It's one of my favorite clubs at Lisa Niguel High School. Matter of fact, the Eco Fricos came to 
our board meeting last year and gave us a presentation. So his question is, how does Molten Legale plan for and address multiple emergencies? I'll go ahead and answer this one. Number one thing is planning and preparation. Our crews constantly train for emergencies and when we get an earthquake or a pandemic, we use that training to make sure that we can take care of the jobs ahead of us. Well, that's all the time we have today for Q&A. But if you have any questions that we didn't get to, please go to our website where you can get the questions to us. I wanna thank you very much for being here today, but before you leave, we do have our directors that have a few words that they would like to say to you. Hi, this is Director Bill Moorhead, and I sit on the Board of Directors for Molten Nagel Water District. I wanna thank you for participating in the forum. I'm sure there was some great information that you were able to take home. Uh, I'm very proud of the Water District and the programs that we offer. I think it's much better, I should say, stands out more than a lot of other water districts. I'm very proud of that. So I hope you take advantage of the things we offer. Check out our website. We have lots of information there. I know I myself have participated in a landscape workshop and my wife and I really appreciate what Molten Miguel is doing. So thank you very much. Hope that you're participating again sometime in the future and you should be proud to be residents and being served by Molten Miguel Water District. Thank you very much. Hi, uh, my name is Don Froelich and I'm one of the directors at the Molten Miguel Water District. I'm currently uh, the vice president of the board and it's a, a great to, for me to be here for this important event. And you've heard a lot of good information about the uh, uh, water district. And uh, we'd certainly like to thank you for working with us during this difficult uh, uh, period of time, but we are surviving well. And we continue to provide wholesome water to all of our customers. I'm Director Kelly Jennings. I just wanna say thank you so much to all of our staff for your flexibility during these challenging times. Thank you for all of your hard work and thank you for providing excellent customer service to all of our residents of Molten Miguel Water District. I'm Dick Fiore, a member of the Board of Directors here at Molten Miguel Water District. I wanna thank you all for joining us today at our first community forum, which I think was a tremendous success. Uh, great turnout and I think the topic of the COVID-19 was certainly uh, topical at this point in time and not only has it been a challenge for you but it was certainly a challenge for the water district here uh, and I we're very proud we're all very proud of the fact that we were able to remain fully operational for both uh, water and sewer service during uh, this time uh, and in large part that has been due to the dedication of the employees here at Molten Miguel who have uh, just been tremendous. Um, Again, we appreciate your coming, and if you have any questions or comments, we'd certainly like to hear them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us here today. On behalf of the board president, Brian Probolski, all the directors, and our outstanding staff, we want to thank you for joining us in our community forum. We hope you'll join us next time where hopefully we will be in person. Thank you very much.